Galilean transforms, Galilean transformations, whatever. Um, but so Galilean transformations essentially are the most basic way of trying to relate um, how objects behave in a, a, a certain frame S to some other frame S prime. So these relate coordinates in a reference frame S, which we're going to view this as our lab frame. Uh, so in other words, the, the frame where, our, where we are still or whatever. So it's a way to relate coordinates in the reference frame S to a, well, an inertially moving, and I, I'm not going to write that every time, but to another frame S prime. Oops. And this all, all kind of um, informally call our moving frame. Now, the reason why I'm being a little bit kind of um, uh, non-committal about that is that turns out moving is going to be kind of a relative term in the end. Who's the one that's really moving is what we should be asking eventually. So that's why I think it's better to just label S and S prime. And specifically, so these transformations, um, as you might imagine, Galileo back in the day was one of the first to propose this. I, we, we can't def definitively say that he was the only one to propose this system, and, and almost certainly not. Um, but at least he had, he had the basic ideas how to mathematically relate the, uh, coordinates in a frame to another frame. And specifically, what we find, and we'll prove this here, but we had known previously that the Galilean transformations, they, um, they, the way, the way I want to say it is they, um, I'll say it technically first. The Galilean transformations conserve Newtonian forces. In other words, the forces that we calculate by Newton's laws will remain unchanged under Galilean transformations. Um, so the way, the, the, the less formal way of saying that is that Galilean transformations mesh with Newton's laws. So Galilean X forms, um, are consistent with Newtonian physics. And so this is going to be a statement that I prove here momentarily, but the reason why we had already been using them previously was that we knew that Newton's laws worked, or they seemed to. And we knew that Galilean transformations are consistent with Newton's laws, so they allow us to, do, to, to write and solve laws of physics using Newton's laws no matter what coordinate system we're in. So that's why these are important. Um, as you might be seeing uh, foreshadowing right now, they might not always apply, and in fact, they won't. But let me explain what they are in the first place. So we have a coordinate system S, and this is again going to be our lab coordinate system. So I'm going to write this as, a uh, as our direction X, our direction Z, and direction Y. Now notice at this point, I'm very intentionally not adding a prime there. If I did that, I would be referring to a frame S prime. But each of those directions refers to our coordinate systems as viewed in an unmoving lab system S. Now, um, notice here that, that I've drawn Y. You could maybe, if you skew your eyes a little bit, it might be unclear where that's pointing. Um, which direction does it, has to be, does it have to be pointing to, according to the right-hand rule? That has to be pointing into the board. Because we know that if we have a x direction pointing here, and by the way, that should be flat, but whatever. If we have an x direction pointing here, a z direction pointing up, the, the y variable has to be into the board there, according to the right-hand rule, x, y, z. Now, let's say we have a second coordinate system. Um, let's say we happen to see, and, and, and I'll explain why we might have a need for this. Um, now we have a, um, here's a, rocket person. Now here's a rocket strapped to their back and they're flying through the air. Here's their hands. There's their head. So here's our rocket here. And that rocket here we see is flying through space at some speed V. So that rocket here's view of space is going to look different than the, the observer's view of space 
who's standing still. And specifically, I'm going to draw what the Rocketeer would think their coordinate system looks like. Now, we, we've, we've very cleverly aligned it so that the x-axis for s points in the same direction as that Rocketeer's velocity, which we're going to say that he's also going to call that direction x for himself. Now, we, he's actually called x prime. But what I'm saying, though, is that the x directions are going to be aligned so that his x-axis, which we're going to call x prime to be very clear, x prime in red, what he views x as, lines up perfectly with what the lab observer views x as. His z prime axis, which points perpendicular to the motion, motion z prime, is lined up perfectly with the z axis, and same with the y prime axis. So, I mean, this is the simplest way we can construct this. So the only difference is, as time goes by, his motion in his x direction, will, or, or his position, I should say, in the x direction, will change as viewed in the, x, in the s axis. There's too many x's and s's. So, specifically, let's talk about his position. So the Rocketeer's position. So the Rocketeer's position over time, and, and let's just say we're going to start at um, start at t equals zero with um, with his position here, x prime at um, or we'll say the, or, the origin x prime equaling x equaling zero. Jeez, I can't draw. I hope that makes sense. So in other words, both coordinate systems line up at t equals zero. So in other words, the snapshot that we caught here when he's past the, the origin here is a little bit past, um, past t zero because he's moved beyond the origin there. So this might be one second after t0 or whatnot. So once we make that, make that assumption that their origins are going to line up at t0, now we can parameterize his position as a function of time. So the position x of the rocket here, I'll write that as x sub r of the rocket here. Now notice that I'm not adding a prime. So the x position of the rocket here over time changes how? As time goes by, it gets further and further. And more specifically, as time goes by after one second, how far will he be? If he's going, let's say, let's say he's going 10 meters per second, after one second, he's 10 meters per second times one, or 10 meters away. After two seconds, he's 10 meters per second times two meters away. So what we're seeing is the Rocketeer's position viewed in the unprimed frame will increase according to his velocity times time. Now, what about any sort of position in the y? If, let's say we want to measure his, posi his position in the y. If the coordinate systems matched initially, and if he did not move in any direction other than the x, Later on, let's, let's say the Rocketeer's position in the Y can't have changed from what it used to be before. So whatever the Rocketeer's position in the Y direction was before, it's going to remain the same. And so, more, more importantly, if he measures that he's, let's say, 18 feet above the ground earlier, he's going to remain 18 feet above the, above the ground for future times, no matter whether S or S prime views him. And by the way, I should write that here. So whatever the Rocketeer measures his height to be, and I, I'm saying the Y, I, I, I'm talking about the Z axis here. I guess I'm getting myself a little bit confused. But the point is, in the directions perpendicular to the motion, whether the Y direction or the Z direction, the position of the Rocketeer in the Y coordinate system will match that 
in the primed coordinate system. So if he describes himself as 18 feet uh, uh, sideways, S coordinate system will also describe as that sideways. Now, same thing in the Z. I, I hope that makes sense, that, that in the directions that aren't X, the direction of motion, whatever position they were in before, which may not have been zero comma zero, whatever direction they were at before is gonna remain the same and they will always match. But the X position will change. Now, let's, do, let's make one more kind of slightly different assumption. Let's say that the Rocketeer wasn't necessarily at a position of X of zero. In other words, he might be two feet above or ahead of the coordinate system. So I'm gonna draw here. Let's see. So what I wanna show now is that at T zero, we have a Z axis that's lined up. We have an X axis that's lined up. We have a Y axis that's lined up. But let's say the Rocketeer was offset a little bit. So he's offset a little bit to the right. So he has some position that's X prime, that's not zero, he's, he's offset a little bit to the right. He has a position Y prime that's offset a little bit. So he's not exactly in the, the X equals zero, Y equals zero, Z equals zero frame. So his coordinate system is X prime, Y prime, Z prime. So if, if he has some non-zero position in all three of those axes, we don't have to do anything with the Y and the Z here. But what we said before, if, he's, if we said that his position was zero to start with, it would increase like that. What do we have to add to that now? So what we have to add to this is, let's see, the initial position here. So it's gonna be X R prime so let's say if he started two feet ahead of the starting line, it kept getting greater at T of zero. If at T of zero, that two feet ahead of the starting line has to match. And then it increases further after that with time. So what we've just drawn here is a Galilean transformation. It tells us as long as you align your coordinate systems properly, that you have motion, relative motion, only in the X direction, that the X position changes like that. And I guess I missed that a little bit. So the X position changes like that, the Y position and Z, Z position don't change. And one other thing, there's one other variable we have to add in here. And I'm gonna redraw that just slightly in a moment, but think about what that is. So um, what I'm gonna draw here, by the way, uh, I'm gonna draw two different sets of transformations for the, for the Galilean transformations. I'll draw them out in their entirety, including the missing equation that we didn't do there. Um, and so the first, the first half is gonna be going from S to S prime, and another half from S prime to S. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. Okay, so what I've drawn up here are, are the, the Galilean transformations that we just derived and then what we call the inverse Galilean transformations. Now, um, first of all, let's focus on this. You see the one other equation I added there was that T equals T prime. And, and that's a really, really, really important equation there because it means that we implicitly assume something to be true without thinking about it. Um, or maybe you did think about it and you reasonably assumed it to be true. Um, either way though, what we're saying is that the only variable that changes when going from X, X prime to X is the X variable in the direction of motion. And by the way, this is how, if you know the variables in the S prime coordinate system, you can turn them into something in the S coordinate system. Now the inverse of that, if you know them in the S coordinate system, going into S prime goes according to this here. So the, the two basic canonical transformations, the Galilean transformations.